Okay, welcome back everybody. Today we're covering metamorphic rocks, which is the third and final type of rocks that we're going to cover before we move on into another section. A metamorphic rock is one whose original form has been changed by heat, pressure, or chemically active fluids. This alteration is called recrystallization, and these changes are not caused by melting. If it was melted and cool, it would be an igneous rock instead of a metamorphic. When rocks are subjected to elevated temperatures and pressures, for example due to deep burial in orogenic or mountain building zones when two continents collide, they may become metamorphosed. Metamorphism is from the Greek to change in form. They slowly recrystallize while remaining in the solid state, and this can take thousands or millions of years. Metamorphism is essentially an isochemical process which means that the bulk chemical composition of a rock body is more or less unchanged from the protolith or original rock. But the minerals may be largely recrystallized into a new mineral assemblage. Metamorphic recrystallization is caused by one or more, both of either elevated temperatures and or high pressures. Regional metamorphism is the result of high pressures and elevated temperatures associated with deep burial in an orogenic belt. Remember, orogenic means that it's a mountain building area. Platy minerals such as micas and elongate minerals like hornblende recrystallize and or rotate into a new orientation perpendicular to the applied stress. While the other minerals recrystallize into new crystals which are stable at higher pressures and temperatures. This type of metamorphism occurs over large areas that were subjected to high degrees of deformation under differential stress. Thus, it usually results in forming metamorphic rocks that are strongly foliated, such as slates, schists, and gneisses. The different stresses usually result from tectonic forces that produce a compression of the rocks, such as when two continental masses collide with one another. Thus, regionally metamorphosed rocks occur in the cores of the mountain ranges or in eroded mountain, uh, eroded mountain ranges. Compressive stresses result in folding of the rock, as shown here in the picture, and results in a thickening of the crust which tends to push the rocks down to deeper levels where they're subjected to even higher temperatures and pressures. Foliation is the result of parallel arrangement of micas or other rocks in a plane perpendicular to the maximum principal applied stress. Alineation is caused by a similar growth of elongate minerals like hornblende in this plane. Slate, schist, and gneiss are three common foliated metamorphic rocks. Slate is hard, fine-grained rock with a well-developed rock cleavage or slaty cleavage caused by the incipient growth of platy or micaceous minerals due to metamorphism of fine grain clastic sediments, such as in shale and siltstone, and also volcanic tuffs. Schist is a higher degree of metamorphism characterized by coarse grained foliation and or lineation with mica metamorphism, um, mica crystals large enough to be easily identified to the unaided eye. And finally, gneiss is a medium to coarse-grained, irregularly banded rock with only poorly developed cleavage. The light and dark bands, called gneissic banding, are alternations of felsic and mafic layers. Slate is a product of low-grade metamorphism, which means that not terribly great burial temperatures and pressures are required. Schist and gneiss are produced by medium to high-grade metamorphism. In some cases, gneisses are produced by higher grade metamorphism than schists. Low grade metamorphic rocks tend to be fine grained, the newly formed metamorphic mineral grains, that is. The high grade metamorphic rocks tend to be coarse grained, but grain size is also dependent on the grain size of the protolith. Non foliated metamorphic rocks include quartzite, which is metamorphosed sandstone in which the quartz grains have recrystallized into a very solid interlocking network. And marble is another type of non-foliated metamorphic rock, which is metamorphosed limestone composed of recrystallized and interlocking calcite and dolomite crystals. 
The other major way metamorphism happens is through contact metamorphism. This is the result of the baking of the surrounding country rocks by an igneous intrusion. The metamorphic aureole surrounding an igneous body may be only two centimeters wide adjacent to a small dike, or it may be up to two kilometers wide at the contact with a large cooling granite pluton. Contact metamorphosed rocks may be bleached out looking and nondescript and fine grained. A common contact metamorphic rock is Hornfell, which is German for hard rock. A third type of metamorphism is called hydrothermal alteration. It's related to the circulation of hot mineralated fluids through rock bodies. This is particularly important in the alteration of ocean crust in the high heat flow regime near the mid-ocean ridges. Serpentinites form from hydration of peridotites. I hate saying that word, sorry. Olivine-rich rocks at the base of the oceanic crust. Hydrothermal alteration also occurs as a result of hot fluids escaping from a cooling pluton, in addition to the high temperatures contact metamorphism occurring there. And finally, the fourth type of metamorphism is called cataclastic metamorphism. These form where rocks are being faulted and sheared. Cataclastite or fault breccias form in brittle fault zones and consist of larger angular rock fragments dispersed in a fine-grained matrix. Myelinites are foliated, actually sheared, stretched, and streaked rocks formed in plastic shear zones at depths and pressures too great for rock to break. The rock becomes drawn out like modeling clay or bubble gum. Cataclasis results when rocks around faults or other intense deformations fracture on very small scales. Reduction in the grain size is the most common signature of cataclastic metamorphism. Metamorphic minerals don't usually form because temperatures are typically low. At greater depths, though, myelinites form by recrystallization with crystal orientations dictated by local stresses or plastic flow. Recrystallized myelinites can end up stronger than the undeformed rocks around them. Okay, that concludes metamorphic rocks. I know that there was a lot of vocabulary in here that is unfamiliar to you, so make sure that you do review this material before you take the quiz on it, and you really need to take the quiz on it. Okay, if you have any questions, see me during office hours or send me an email. Have a good day.